Welcome to another episode. Jesus, fuck. Cut that. Welcome to another episode of the Busted Spring Tour 2024. If you're a tier one and joining us, you guys know what to do. Welcome to Florida State fans with open R's. If you're a Florida State fan just tuning in, make sure you're subscribed and leaving comments. What we do on the Spring Tour is we go to different stops. We just released the Nebraska interviews. Now we're doing Florida State. We're going to have Oregon and then Alabama. But what we need you to do is make sure you're subscribed because we sit down, we interview a couple players and the head coach, talk to them about the previous year, the expectations of the upcoming year because, let's face it, when we're when we're in the offseason, we all have the best expectations. We've all won the national title, so the conversations are a lot more fun. You're about to watch Braden Fitz and coach Norvell, head coach Norvell, and then tomorrow you will be watching Patrick Payton and DJ, I don't want to butcher your last name, but DJ the quarterback that went from Clemson to Oregon State, and now his final stop at Florida State. Again, thank you so much for your support. If you're a Florida State fan and it's your first time tuning in, welcome to Bustin' with the Boys. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're uh, leaving comments. You can follow us at Bustin' WTB. Enjoy this episode. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Solid. You went out to the stock exchange? Sick as fuck, yeah. Does he need to be closer to his oh, mouth? My don't, fault. don't be scared to put it up my there. You know. All right, all right, all right. You was uh, out at the stock exchange? Yeah. So, uh, for one, my agency, bro, they're sick as fuck. Like, they get me hooked up with like, all these deals. And, uh, like, you know, DDA and financial yeah, advisor. So, yeah, I work yeah, with yeah. him. And, like, uh, I've been with DDA, or I've known DDA since my rookie year. Right. Okay. okay He's yeah, good people. Yeah, yeah, good real good people. people man. So, like, we're just working with him. And, like, I've always been into like the stock market and stuff, like, kind of investing, like, just setting up for retirement. And then we just reached out to the stock exchange. Like, yeah, like come on, we'll give you a tour. Like, I got to see like the full, yeah, the whole thing. It was, it was super dope. I read your your grandpa was a stockbroker. Uh, my uncle, he was a, uh, he was a stockbroker. Okay, and, uh, he he's passed away, but it was more so like my grandfather, like just telling me like like getting into investments and like just kind of you know, being ready for retirement, like, you know, the money could last forever. And, like, when I got, like, the NIL and all that stuff, I kind of, like, right away was, like, I'm going to put this away and just, you know, get right. But do you just, did you just listen to them or do you, like, read? No, or, I do, like, get you like, the, like the stuff. Motley Fool podcast. Like, I watch them and just, like, keep up on stocks. I do, like, my own reading stuff. Like, like the first book I ever read was, like, The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like, the real baseline, like, you know, bottom stuff. But like, yeah. I, I just try to read, like, just keep up on stuff. Like, Fidelity has, like, the little, like, you know, like, articles that you can read and stuff. But... By no means I'm a fucking like you know master of this shit, but I just kind of I mean, keep you're up. ahead of the game. Bro. I just try to keep up because yeah. like, I know how quick this shit Delaney, can go. Delaney, he didn't do nothing like that when he was coming oh, in the league. Dumb, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crazy. Right out the jump. I'm kidding you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, a little. That's a little, bro. That's oh, little bro. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let, let that slide. To Delaney's yeah, yeah. Delaney's so, uh, so why you choose sport management then for a major? No, that's what we're talking about. That's the baseline question. Sport management. Uh, I don't know. Do I start off like when I was in? I did like exercise science. I was gonna be like a PT, but I quickly realized like, I did like an internship and I was working with fucking old people. I was like, no, nah, I think gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and like even like working with football. Like I think my coach basically told me that listen, man. Like because I was stra- I wasn't doing good in school. He's like, listen, like you're either gonna have to pick one or the other if you're gonna be the player you want to be. And I was like, fuck it, I'm playing ball. Like, we're we're, the, we're playing ball, but. Uh, then I like switched like business at one point. I was like, nah, that ain't gonna happen. And then uh sport man, my advisor was like, shit, there's an easy program called yeah, sport no, management. No. <laughs> like, she was like, she's like, all the guys do it. I was like, shit, say less, bro. Yeah, like, no, we're, we're, indeed, indeed. What'd you major there? in? Oh, communication. Communication. Yeah. Right, that was the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> general studies until you had to pick communications. Yeah, yeah. General studies all the way up to my period, my junior year. And then when I got here, I was like, uh, you know, what do you want to do? I was like, shit, I'm just here to ball. And like, yeah. all right, we'll get you some online classes. Like four online classes and kind of just finished up. But what got you down here from Indiana? Growing up in Indiana, uh, didn't want to go to any, didn't want to go anywhere in the Midwest or no? I mean, I had visited Notre Dame because it was like Notre Dame, USC. Here were like my top three, and uh, so you were a beast. I'm not about bees. We made it. We made it happen out there. You feel me? Like we, we made it happen. I mean, shit, the six years of college, but I hope yeah. I'd be all right. Shit. So, but so that's why you so what you you hit the portal from Western Michigan, correct? Yeah, yeah. After what you had 148 tackles with 13 and a half sacks. All right, that, all right. You did your you did your yeah, research. Yeah, okay. So you yeah. was like, shit, it's time to hit the portal. Well, I was gonna stay because uh, I had to get a shoulder surgery. I wanted to like come off the NFL. Like, I had like undrafted grade, but I was like, fuck it. Like if I can get my foot in the door, like you know, I'm, I'm a grinder. We can make it happen. But uh, 
so my coach got fired like three days later after I like planned to get the surgery done on my shoulder, like stay another year. He gets fired. You know, when a head coach gets fired, fucking mad scramble in the building. Everyone's trying to cover their own ass. And I had met with the right, my D coordinators. Like, Listen, man, this could be a great opportunity for you. Like hit the portal. And I knew nothing about it. Like I'm at, a, I'm at a group of five. Like most guys that come from power five to group of five hit the portal. Their, their experience is bad. So that's all I knew was like, ah, like, you know, not many phone calls, but I fucking hop in like three days later or like the whole, like three weeks after that, my phone is like exploding. Like every school in the country hit me up. I'm like, what is this shit, bro? It's it's madness because you get like a short window to like make it happen to like, I mean, you get from like December 1st or something, something like that to like the beginning of January. You get a month to decide where you want to go play ball and like you're trying to go on visits and like just figure it out. I mean, shit, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it's still like stressful as fuck just trying to figure out, you know, what we want to do. But so you thought. You thought you would have had a bad experience just because of the school where you was coming from, from the school, but not looking at what you had did that year was going to be. Well, the, yeah, the, because my whole career, I mean, you're kind of overlooked playing the group of five. I mean, you're always like the little sister in the, you know, the football world. I mean, power five kind of just looks at you like, ah, you know, whatever. And that was like kind of the story of my career of, you know, oh, he ain't played nobody. He ain't played no big boy ball. So, and that, I kind of, that was a lot of what played in me coming down because they say, you know, the best balls down here in the Southeast. So, was, you know, like Florida State looked like a great opportunity. I mean, you guys probably met with Norvell. I mean, he's he's yeah. a beast. Dude. Yeah, like, yeah, he, he was cool. fun. He, he was like, cool. He, yeah. he he was a good sell. I mean, he was in my kitchen, you know, banging on my table. We staring contests for like two and a half hours. <laughs> I was like, you know, this guy, this, this guy's different, you know. Uh, but no, I mean, it was it was cool. And then you know, like I wanted to get out of the cold for a little bit. I played all my years up north, so like uh, Notre Dame, it was cold as fuck up there. I, like, I got to get out of here, man. Like I was like thirty minutes from my home is where I'm from. Notre Dame is, so I was like, nah. And I was out in L.A. Not an LA guy. That's not my vibe. But uh, but no, the Tallahassee's kind of yeah, it was it made, it made the most sense. Wait, forgive me, forgive me for being dumb on on your on your journey. I you hit it. the portal. You got here from the portal. Yeah, I got here from the portal. You yeah. were you were playing at Notre Dame. No, 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 no. I was at Western Michigan for five years. I'm not. I'm not following along. I'm saying. <laughs> no, you're good. No, you're good. No, you're good. I I get it. I get it. Yeah. You're Western Michigan up until this last year. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I apologize. No, you're good. So right? he, after you had that year. What I just said with the 140 tackles, 13 and a half sacks, but he he hit the portal and that ultimately got him to Florida State. That's then you have a hell of a year here. Yeah, and came and here you, and killed, you crushed at the combine. I don't know if you read. I, you made my old combine team. I was hoping so. Dude. Yeah. I, 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 I said, yeah. in the all white team. I've been waiting on that. I was like, hang on, hang on. He, you got to you got to put some work in before you make that score. Yeah, I was about to say. He, he, say, he made the old combine team. He's got to do some work. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm on the all white combine. We're gonna practice squad the all white team. We need some more interior guys. So when we you need more portal, interior hey, guys. Come on, dude. Was it so. an NIL deal waiting for you when you hit the portal? Uh, yeah, it was a little money on the table. Okay. I, mean, <laughs> I could, I probably could have made more going to USC, but oh. I was no. I mean, on all honesty, Take it, now that you're now that you're out of it, and you got to experience the NIL. Like, yeah. what does that process look like? Like real time, you said there's a short window. Your phone wasn't ringing at first, but then it just blew up all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Like, is it is it financial communication that goes on a lot between your your agent and yeah. the the schools? Like, how does that work? Kind of all depends. Like some schools, because at the time, like coaches aren't allowed to talk about it. Usually, it's like a third party, like the know, collectives, so, right? Yeah, the collectives, like like. The school be like hey you're about to get a phone call from this you know say Atlanta number and then they're like hey make sure you pick this up you pick up the phone they're like the guy's like all right hey like you know this is what we're thinking like you know you you can count or whatever you feel and like some guys have age I, I did it all on my own I did all my negotiating or negotiating just like hey I want this like you know yeah um and yeah that's kind of just how it goes or like some schools something I gotta give no fucking names but like they're like hey like straight up head coach is like yo we're gonna give you this like to come here like let's get you on campus now sign seal delivered you know the whole whole nine yards of the process but it just kind of varies but it's fucking sketchy bro it's the wild west usc was gonna pay you the most yeah they would have paid you allowed to share that number uh i mean it was probably it was upwards of like four like it was in that range like okay. you know between like two and they basically four. call and it's like same thing like hey here's what we're thinking we're thinking four hundred thousand dollars no know? i mean that, that was more like when i was on campus and like like they they do it crazy out there. They try to put you up in the you know the high rise apartment like thirty six floor and like oh, all shit. that sounds nice. But like when I'm thinking about my last year at college ball, I'm like y'all like I need to lock the fuck in. Like I've been here for six years. Like I gotta get up out of here. You know, I like, try to make something happen. So all that sounded cool. Like I'm looking out seeing L A. But I'm like really deep down. I'm like this is ain't for me. Like I need I need like this town home over here across the street on Hayden Road. You know, yeah. like, to make it happen. But something more gritty. A little more gritty, you know. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, yeah, I'm the big blue collar guy, right? That's that's my label, the fucking lunch pill. But you tape, you tape your fingers and yeah, shit. No gloves, you yeah. Know, yeah. Rocket, yeah. But uh, 
So uh, like, uh, do they get to hit you before you enter the portal? Like, how how does that work? Like, you gotta say you go into the portal before you can receive. Well, no, that was the crazy part. So like, midway through the season, my high school coach is calling me. He's like, "Hey, like, schools are asking, like, hey, are you gonna hit the portal or hit the draft?" So, um, yeah, he called me, but hey, so and so called and said, "Like, what are you gonna do after the season?" I have no idea. I'm like, "Shit, dude, I'm still trying to." It's like week six, week seven. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what I got going on, and. Um, so that that's why I kind of got like the first sense, like, all right, there might be some interest, but like you never know how like true that shit is. Like, you know, everything could be wishy washy in this game of like, you know, one call a coach could call and he could be head to the next spot the next day. Like you just never know. But so I don't know. That that was like the first sense of like, okay, there might be some interest out there, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you get to when you go into your senior year this year, you have a hell of a year. Talk to us about we've asked each guy, like talk yeah. to us about the day where you guys didn't get picked for the uh the college football playoff. Uh, I mean, yeah, and it sucks. You know, you're riding that. We just won the ACC, and like me personally, I like the game of my life for the ACC championship game. And like, you're, I'm riding this high, like, oh man, like we just ball. You know, we're good. And like, you're thinking, 13 and 0, win the ACC. Like, you feel you feel like there's no questions. Like, you like you feel safe, secure, but. Fucking Michigan goes up one, Washington two, and then you see Texas three. You're like, oh fuck! Like, you can kind of see everyone kind of like lean back and chill. Like, oh no way! At least the people that are aware of like what what was happening all year. You know, they want that rematch. ESPN wants that rematch or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was terrible, especially just like the body of work. Because I mean, if you look at this team, I mean, like of our twenty, starting twenty two on both sides of the ball, I'd say maybe seventeen of us are transfers. Whether it's one year, two year, three year transfers, that uh, this team was built up with guys coming from all their different, you know, stories, destinations, which everyone is. But when you're a college guy, and you transfer like it's a little different. You got a little baggage with you, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, you get here and like it's a bunch of transfers, and like you're trying to buy into Coach Norvell's culture, and that's what everybody did. I mean, we took, I mean, from what he's took a team from four four wins, five wins, to ten wins, to thirteen wins, like. To see how that all just crumbled in like one in the span of like on one TV broadcast, it yeah. just kind of sucked. And like, he's got to stand up there and try to save the day and give a speech. It's just like a shitty situation. Damn. When uh, you were talking, you were alluding to the fact there's a bunch of transfers that came in. Like you're kind yeah. of a hodgepodge mix of guys. For sure. Yeah. Can you talk about Coach Norvell's leadership and like corralling a group of college kids oh, to? It's, it's insane, dude. Go 13 and 0. It's, that whole buy-in yeah. of the program. I mean, it's second to none. I mean, and I, I got to see best of both worlds. I was at a program for five years with one coach and got to come in and experience, you know, like a whole new style of leadership, a whole new, that's a whole new way to run a program. Like just being around that was like insane. Just, like, I wish you guys could follow him around for a day because like the man doesn't stop. Like, Is there a couple things that stand out? Just like his consistency, like just every day is the energy and he demands it from everyone. Like this is like the first place, I mean, I've only been to two schools, but it's like the first place I've been to where, you know, we got things around the building, like no headphones, no hoods, no earrings. And like, it's not just demanded from a coach. Usually where you're at, like, it's like a head coach, a coordinator that's like demanding it. But no, it's, it's the, I mean, it's the training room. Assistant trainers are saying, hey, take your hood off. It's the academic staff, take your hood off. It's the cafeteria staff, hey, take your earrings out. Like, it's the whole building. And like, that's why we're so successful because it's demanded everywhere. And I think that's what helps the transfers when they come in because you could come in and be a shithead, but you got, you know, 90 guys that are bought in. Like, you have no, no you know, choice but to fall in line. And if you don't, you're out. Like, make y'all hold each other accountable. It really does. It makes it easier because, you know, if, you know, if I got uh, the cafeteria lady saying take your earrings out, for a guy like me coming in and say, hey, like, yo, take it all or take the hood off. It makes, it makes everyone's job easier. Like, it makes yeah. leadership easier. Like, teaches you a whole new, like, level of leadership. And that's all a testament to him because he's the one that demands it. It's just a trickle effect. Uh, funny question. You say you was five years at Western uh, Michigan. You didn't think you could have went to the NFL out of out of just what you've done there, and and go to the combine and do what you did at the combine. I mean, you going to the combine pretty much put you up higher than what they probably had you on the board. So you don't think that was a possibility for you to even do that? Yeah. Just coming out of it was, it was on the table because like, like I said, after my fifth year, I wanted to leave. Like. I mean, they, I was projected, like, at the most, maybe a 6'7". And that was, like, being generous. It was more like an undrafted free agent guy. And, like, I could have left. I wanted to leave, but I needed to get my shoulder worked on. And, like, I mean, I wasn't going to go through the process with a bump shoulder just because yeah. I'm already knocked because I played at a Western Michigan. I'm already knocked because, you know, I was a little bit – I played lighter. I was playing interior, like, 280 back then. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, looking back, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, but, like, looking back, like, seeing, like – the growth I made here and the growth like I made like as a man, a player, everything at Florida State, like I think it's what's gonna benefit me the most going to the next level. Like I was able to grow my game and just 
who I am as a person, all the yeah, everything combined, like making that transition. Like when I was at Western Michigan, I had the same coordinator, head coach for all my five years. I was like one of the fortunate ones to never have a different coach. So I was in the same program, the same, you know, scheme and coming down here and have to make that transition for one year to, you know, learn a new locker room, learn a new scheme, learn a new style of play. Like I think that's going to make my transition easier to the next level because I'm going to have to do it all over again in two months here. Right? Yeah. I love that, dude. No, um definitely. Can you talk about uh, you getting acclimated? You're saying like learn a new scheme, learn a new locker room. Like how was that for you? Like getting acclimated with the boys and getting acclimated with the program. Like being a new guy, I'm sure you, there were some nerves coming down here, getting into, getting around a new squad. No, 100%. It was tough because like I had a shoulder surgery December 9th and I come in here and I'm supposed to be this big time transfer. I'm walking around in a fucking sling. So, and I'm supposed to be, like I said, this big time transfer. Like, oh, who the fuck is a white boy walking around in a sling? And I'm like... <laughs> Like, who is this guy, right? So, like, that's hard for me because I'm, like, a big respect guy. Like, I got to earn your respect before I can really, like, you know, like stand up and lead and, like, do my talk and, like, have fun and stuff. Like, I want you to know that I'm a worker, you know? But yeah, so that was tough. So, like, it really was, like, till May to when I could really start working. I mean, I got here in January and I got cleared in May. So, like, I'm just – because, you know, when you're an injured guy. Like, when the guys are in the weight room right now, I'd be in the training room doing yeah. work or, like – you're out in the field during spring ball, but I'm in the pit doing work. So I'm like, there's no time to show, like, man, I can do this. So like, I'm fucking sneaking in here on Sunday, walking the stadiums in my sling, like, just doing whatever I could. Just be like, man, I can, I'll make this happen. But uh, it, after like the first couple of days, like, they said, oh, shit, like, this guy can ball. And then obviously throw them pads on, like, pads ain't gonna lie. So that, that's kind of where I was able to establish myself and just show, like, yeah, we can ball, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, you had to prove a point pretty much. Like, you was like, once I get on that field, I'll show y'all, you know what I mean? Because I, I know how it is. You you come in, we sign a guy, he have surgery. As soon as he come in, you like, what the f yeah, like, bruh. You got a free agent. See, exactly. So, <laughs> see, then that's you know that's happening. Yeah. You're, like, you're in your head like, I got to, it was more like prove myself, right? You yeah, know, just yeah, like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah, you're like sitting on the, you're sitting on the training table just like, man, these motherfuckers, they think I'm trash. Trash. Yeah, you know you, me. Uh, I'll come in pockets. <laughs> you, you just got paid. You hurt pockets. Uh, that that's me. You yeah, know. Delaney never held back. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I love that. Shit. Remember I the story? The remember the uh, story in December? With you, I uh, come in. You was like, he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He was he was playing, but you got hurt. Did you get nah, hurt? I'm I'm trying to think of like what it was, what the setup was, but basically he was calling me fat. We was in the cold tubs. We I was hurt. I didn't play. I was hurt. I don't know. I think Will got hurt late in the season, and he wasn't playing. So he got a little big. It was just wintertime. Like, holiday season comes around. You got Thanksgiving. It rolls in the fucking right, December. Right, it always right. gets me every year. Yeah, yeah. I, he walks in. I go, what up, Will? Damn. You st I said, what up, comp? Oh, <laughs> You stop working out? Right. Yeah. I'm walking in to get in the cold tub, standing there in my tights, just like, fuck. Yeah. He like, wait, what you mean? <laughs> like, looking a little rough over there, buddy. Yeah. No, nah, but I, I can get what you're saying. Like, just having that mindset of like, damn, I come in. I'm the guy. They probably talked about, like, we about to get this top guy. Oh, he's about to come in, help the program. Come in, sling. You feel me? And, like, and it's you guys. Know the talk's going on. Oh like, yeah, because it's guys you in your position. Like, yeah, hey, exactly. They're like, man, this motherfucker's uh, supposed yeah. to come take my job. Coach like, chirps you a little bit. You feel me? It's like, yeah, and like you walk, you're walking around the building like a ghost, and you're injured. Coach don't want nothing to do with you. Like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, what can you do for me, business? So yeah. like, you see, coach say, like, hey, you doing good? I'm like, yeah. fuck, dude. I'm just trying to make trying it. Yeah, try yeah. it, bro. Like, fuck. what are you uh, looking forward to most outside of the competition part with the next level? What do you, what do you do? Uh, what are you projected as right now? Definitely like, where are you here? Like late first, early second, like in that range. Yeah. Bro, it's been, bro, Let's go, bro. Wow, bro. I can't believe it. Isn't that shit, shit crazy? Bro, it's fucking crazy. Bro. Growing like, up in Indiana, Western Michigan, five years, and you're sitting here bro, being like, yo, I can't late believe first, first like, early bro, second. Make, just let me get drafted. Bro, it doesn't make sense, bro. It's like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> so, so I'm just like, fuck it, let's go, bro. <laughs> what was your mindset? Like, what was your your team telling you when you went to the combine? It was probably like, like telling you, this can be make or break you. This is going to be, you got to put on a show if you want to move up in the draft boards. Like, what was the mindset when you was going into the combine? Uh, well, it kind of really all started, like, so even before, like, the ACC championship game, like, my projection was, like, I mean, I would have been lucky to be, like, a fourth, fifth guy, like, fourth, fifth round guy, which is still great. I mean, that's, yeah, right. still, that's a great problem good. to have, right? Yeah. But uh, so then I go to the senior bowl, ball out the senior bowl. Like, that's where I really, like, made my mark. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, it's gotta Work go. with the coaches, be in the you, meetings. Exactly. Like, you get to actually, like, show who you are, do the interviews. Like, your D-line coach could be like, like my D-line coach is a D-line coach from the Raiders. So, like, I get to work with him. And uh, so, like, that was, like, the first thing. Like, okay, this guy can ball. So that kind of moved me up a little bit. And the combine, like, I knew that was kind of going to be my bread and butter. Like, I've kind of always, like, tested well, done the testing shit well. And then, like... 
Like I was training down at Bomberitos down in uh, Davie and uh, like that. We knew we were like, fuck, like we could, we could fucking make some numbers here, boys. Yeah. Like, hey, like. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, going into it, like me and like me and my agent were talking, I'm like, shit. And I'm asking him, like, yo, like, what do you think would happen if I run this 4 7? And he's like, yo, like that would be insane. And I'm like, we're going to fucking run a 4 7. Like, come on now. And even like all the other numbers, I'm like, I wanted to, I wanted to sweep the board. I was like, yo, like if I'm going to make a name, like we're going to dominate this thing. And like, is the combine that important? No, but to the public eye, it's like, oh my God, this guy's a freak athlete, right? But right. You know, it don't really translate the ball as much no. as, I mean, they just, it's it's a publicity thing. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to take advantage of this and just kind of like, put put my put my talents on display, you know, go out there and ball, right? Yeah. But, and and he, like it, a show though. That's what, I mean, at the end of the day, we watch film. We, watch, we, we know what you can do because we watch film, but it's a show. And when you go and put on a damn show, when all the cameras is, we know when that game come around, you gonna put on a show, and That's your name's that, getting in front of everybody. Whether or not it means a whole lot yeah. as far as like getting on the field, but 100%. your name is just in front of everybody. Yeah, exactly, everybody. And I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, like just being in front of everybody. But like that whole week, man. Like the testing's important, but like they just try to mentally fuck you the whole week. Oh yeah. Like, you got any uh, any good stories coming out of that week? See, I didn't get any crazy questions. Like I, everyone asked me, like, what was the craziest question? But most teams were just pretty straight up with me because I mean, I, I ain't got no baggage. I ain't got no like off the field issues. So most of my meetings were pretty straight up, just trying to get to know me because a lot of teams just didn't know. Who the fuck I was like who the hell is this guy right. coming from where he was but uh no nah, I mean but you just spend more time in your jaws and you do like in your clothes like they just do every test under the sun I mean I was at the hospital from like eight to four in the afternoon oh like, like MRIs five and shit. MRIs fuck, it was insane like 35 x-rays like just dumb shit but but like after that combine your name was talked every people knew who you were yeah, it was that, buzzing, that was man. like it was dope, that was man. like a thing and that and that's why I tell sometimes like combine can be a, a, a helping factor of a player that's like you're good, but the people don't know who you are. And then you go to the combine, and it's like that guy. Right, we yeah. need him on our team because it's only fans really it's, watching the combine. Exactly, yeah. you get what I'm saying. Exactly. And they like we need him. We got to get that. Like, if we get him, we're going to be the truth. Create that buzz. Yeah. You know I mean? Create <laughs> that buzz. Go. Putting pressure on the front all. Yeah. You know? Just, and those numbers those numbers pop off, and then it's like, you know, with scouts, coaches, whoever. It's like, oh, let me go back and watch this tape, or let me go exactly. check this tape out a little bit yeah, more. For sure. Just boost you a little bit. But even, like, media, like he said, he just came from New York. He's doing all these shows, doing oh, all yeah, these. It changed everything. That yeah. changes everything. Like, because now... The people that's them announcers, they want him. Them producers want it. Let's get him on a show. Let's get him on a show. That's enough face we haven't seen. Let's get him on a show. And that and that's where it, it matters the most. And I was telling them, I was at the combine when you was there, and I was like, dude went nuts. I'm like, everybody was just like, he's a beast. Look at this dude, like, move. I'm like, I didn't know who he was at first. And I'm like, yeah. then I'm like, God damn, I'll start Googling. Yeah. I'm like, oh, he a Who's this white boy? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Everybody's thinking I'm the only white boy out of the fucking field. Like, the fresh yeah. fade going. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> my favorite part is the listen about the stock exchange because I sir you're into the financial where DDA was hitting me up like hey he's really big he's very smart about his money and everything else that, and that's something you started to uh, implement right when you started getting NIL money uh, not it started early on in college but with like I mean, I was at a small school. I was getting my stipend. I'd put like a hundred bucks in a month to just like an index fund or a Roth IRA, and like just start building from there. And then, I mean, see, so you start hitting them little goals. You hit like your first thousand, hit your first five. You yeah, you're like, oh shit, like it starts making money, right? So then, when I got my NIL, I was like. Shit, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a go through Ooh, a bit more than you that. You feel me? Scholarship like, check. You feel me? I'm yeah. like, shit, we're gonna make this happen. But, you put uh, any of the fellows on it? Or uh, was anybody ever curious? Like, hey, uh, it's right. What you do? There's a few guys, you know, just saying, like, hey, like, you know, this is an opportunity. And, like, it sounds good at first, but, like, fuck, I actually gotta give my money away. I'm like, bro, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you're you know, not gonna see it. All right, you can't go to the mall, man. You feel me? Yeah. But, so, no, nah, it was just a great opportunity. And he helped me a lot of just like, because uh, he runs a mutual fund for me. So, like, that was pretty cool to get that, that going, like, that sector of the side going. I'm just trying to get all these different assets going, man. I want to build it and like just keep going, man. Like, cause even watching y'all early, I'll be honest, watching y'all early on and seeing how you guys started was like, okay, like looking for like outlets outside of football of like how can I build myself? Cause this shit ain't gonna last forever. I'm well aware of that. Of just like there's gotta be something to do outside of here. Like that's what I want to get into. Is like I don't know if I want to be a day trader, but I just want to be in the market of just like, you know, that's an easy pathway to some money and like just seeing how you guys built the pockets. Like that's that's your guys' brand now. Like that's what you guys built. And like it seems like you guys went all in 
a few years ago. I mean, I know Taylor, but I don't know. I look like he's done, but like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's not officially uh, retired. He's not, I, officially. He's not, he's not officially. For all 32 out there watching. Uh, not, not officially, <laughs> but like, you guys are all in and it's dope to see. Like, no, you guys are like, no, this is what we're going to do, you know? And like, it's, it's pretty cool. Do you see yourself being a financial advisor when you all said nah, it? That's no, that's not my, no, nah. I don't want to, I want to be an advisor. <laughs> he's just trying to play the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's get in this stock. Which, which ones you like in these days? What kind of stuff? Uh, like? See, I don't do like the individual size. I just do like an index and uh, just like raw. And they say, like, I like to I like to di yes. I like to diversify. Like eventually, I'll get into like the individual when I got more money to play with. But uh, well, uh, I love that man. Yeah, because you, like to to your point, it doesn't last forever. It's one of those things. And, and most guys, they don't even know when it ends. You the, either phone stops ringing, you get cut. You think you're training. You're kind of like, what's gonna happen? It hurt. I'm trying to go do this workout, this tryout. Yeah, you get injured. Some guys don't even know when it's going to end. So it's good that you're like trying to lean into those curiosities that you have. Do you have any other? Uh, curiosities outside of like the financial world. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. The more I started doing like these interviews and stuff, like just like the broadcast time, like it's kind of cool. Like just chopping it up on like I enjoy like the side of it. Like I don't know if I'd ever do like the live TV thing. Like I'd have to see what that's like. That's like I was on the Good Morning Football. I was like, oh shit, like, this is a whole production. Like, don't yeah, cuss, bro. You yeah, can't cuss. You can't I know, and I'm like, bad at it. I cuss yeah. too much. So I'm just like, oh, okay. you gotta have a podcast. Right. Right. You yeah. have a podcast. You ain't gotta worry you ain't about. Gotta it. worry about. But, it. I mean, I don't know. The, the thing with the podcast, like. Everyone's got a podcast now, and like, yeah. what's gonna? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about like, what's gonna be the next big thing, you know? Like, what's gonna be the next like, you know? Because podcasts blew up, and the guys that got on it early got on it early, and now look at them. But like, there's got to be something that's gonna be next, and like, that's kind of what I'm waiting for, looking for. And, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But, uh, it's, it will be some next. Some going. I guess I have a question for y'all. Like, like, oh, what were you about to say? Like, I said, what do you think it'll be? Like, what's the next thing you think? Uh, it'll that's be? the thing, though. You just kind of gotta kind of play it by play it by day. But I was gonna ask y'all, like, when did you know, like? All right, this is gonna start popping off. Like the podcast, like yo, know, when, when did you have that feeling of like, yo, we could turn this into something, you know? Uh, honestly, it was when Vrabel said he cut his dick off for a Super Bowl. That's what Because it went, all that stuff went viral. But our very first one was with Delaney, yeah. and Delaney told a story about uh, an IV. Yeah. You know, I almost died on the sideline. So Pro Football Talk, PFT, and a couple, couple of those uh, uh, media companies picked it up, and it was kind of wrote it in a light of like, you know, Delaney Walker almost dies from a team IV or right, something. Right. So that next week, because I was a free agent, so I wasn't on the. <laughs> this was the year after I was on the Titans, yeah. so I wasn't in the building. But Taylor, Taylor said that Vrabel pulled it up and yeah. was like, "They'll take any little," because he yeah. didn't care. He's, like, "I want you guys to do whatever, you, whatever you guys want to do. I just want you to know that this is." what you know this is what everybody this is what the media will do they'll take a couple of things you say and blow it out of proportion because Delaney's telling it he's you know he's exaggerating some but also he's like telling a good story and they, how the IV fucked him up before a game <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that was our first that was like the first pot so once it kind of got in the news a little bit it's like oh man you know we could have something cool but it, it came from like just the consistency I guess and then we had Jalen on we had Vrabel on and when Jalen came on, Jalen was talking about DMing uh, receivers, girls in college and stuff. That popped off. He mentioned us at his press conference when he, because he was like in the middle of a contract negotiation and somebody tried bringing up something for, from our podcast. And he was like, yeah, yeah, what was the podcast? Go ahead and say their name. And he's like, busting with the boys. So he like, I mean, it was like moments like that that just built from it. And then that year, Titans went on that run. And made it to the AFC mm, Championship. Yeah, yeah. And so it, the callback came back around from Vrabel saying he cut his dick off for a Super Bowl. Because I had been, went to the Raiders at that point. And that cut, they go on this run at the end of the year because they started off shitty. Um, they go on that run. And so it comes back into the, it comes back around to the spotlight and everything else. So, and then we just was able to steadily grow since then, man. Yeah. You got to have the city behind you too, that wherever you at too. The city was that so behind, yeah, the like, and stuff and yeah, yeah, like just when they came out and Taylor had signed a new contract and he started calling himself dad, yeah, and that, that kind of took off too. Yeah. Like, Daddy, yeah, that kind of that kind of took yeah. off, and and it just all made sense with the hats and like right, right. the boys. And yeah, because he's like, a bigger personality for an offensive lineman. Yeah, like he, yeah, you just don't see that. Kind of goes against the grain for what the majority of offensive linemen are like. And yeah, we were, we just we hit it off, and we just uh, we've had fun with it ever right. since. I feel like when Barstool came in, it was like, oh fuck. Like, yeah, when Barstool Barstool DM shortly after it was either the Jalen or the Vrabel one, but they DM'd us our profile in like August. Like, hey, would you guys want to have a conversation? Then they flew out to meet with us like on one of Taylor's off days. 
And uh, we sat with them. Uh, talk. They didn't like talk anything contractually. We just said we had uh, like 12 episodes in the bank that we were just going to run throughout the season because we didn't do the pot in the season. We just had like interviews backlogged. And then uh, we finished out the year, started negotiating with them, and then we signed. Yeah. We signed that next February. Oh, yeah. But it's been, so dude, cool, it's, it's been a blast, man. It's been a lot of fun. Well, it seemed like where it's taking you guys. I miss you guys like on the UFC shit, like just like traveling the country. It's like, crazy. In Vegas with Dana White. I'm just like, what the fuck? Bro, bro it's crazy. Where's he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? You got to shout him out. I don't even know. I couldn't hear. I don't know who that was. Dude. <laughs> Greedy Vans, maybe? I don't know. Uh, honestly, we, honestly, I'm sorry. Honestly, no, you go can ahead. start a pod while you playing in the season. Like, you can just set up at the house and just, you know, say what you want to say to get your foot in the door because now you see a lot of players doing that. That's what they do. They just set up in their room, have their little, and give their point. Yeah, but you can, like, it's, yeah, but you got to have something different about you to have it, like, pop off. And that's why yeah. I feel like him and Taylor popped off so well because you could feel it. You feel like now, like, or something genuine about like what they got going on. Like you watch some of these other ones, you're just like, man, these guys just fucking put a camera in their, yeah, their yeah. living room and started started yeah. recording, you know, which is cool. But like if you really want to turn to something like they did, like, like there's gotta be something genuine about it. Like and you could feel that when you watch their podcast and I ain't trying to give you all the flowers. No, I appreciate it. I was like, bro. Like, hey, I was, like speaking to my mind of like, you know, what like what I would think about going into like starting one. I'm like, ah, No, that was real. Like they got that bus. And then I remember I tried to buy the bus from Taylor as soon as he got it. Yeah, when we bought the bus, it. Delaney yeah. tried buying it for like a vintage clothing. Like he was gonna yeah. just take it and set it on Broadway, sell vintage clothes out of oh, it. Oh shit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was like, nah, we got something planned. But I didn't know y'all was he didn't say anything about the pod. The pod, because he was like, I'm gonna get it running. So he tried to get it fixed, but it was like too much. Parts were obsolete, like yeah. he couldn't get it running. Couldn't get it running. And I remember the first, he was like, yeah, dude, we starting the pod, come on the show. They give me this address, it's in some fucking parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> gravel parking lot, It's a gravel parking lot. With some old chairs sitting some there. Old... <laughs> Do you guys even have it anymore? Is the bus still even out there? You guys... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we still got the bus. Yeah? Yeah, oh yeah, we got the bus. We got the same bus, we got... Well, it I seems mean, like we... on more recent episodes, you guys got like a whole different like setup. So that was there. from uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, the backdrop with the twisted yeah, T yeah, yeah, and the yeah, bus yeah, kind of yeah. in the background. That was set, all set up in Vegas for us. I got you, I got you. So yeah. they had built out a studio in one of the hotel rooms versus mm -hmm. us bringing the bus out there because oh. the bus, bringing the bus is just like yeah. a hassle. So you a got, lot of those backlogs? Like, uh, like, uh, yeah. Some. It just depends on like yeah. where we're going to be throughout the year. Like Facts. we know we could be moving around one month. So like, for instance, Taylor being out a month, it's right. good that we have episodes backlogged because he's doing his thing. And when you're in Vegas for the Super Bowl, like everybody's out there. Right. So That's what an opportunity, opportunity to get yeah, right, to like, yeah, 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 to get in front of people. And then you don't want to run them right away yeah, because yeah. then you're, you know. You run out of your content. Yeah, right? yeah you run out of your content. Yeah, it, yeah. You got to like, yeah, it's like planning this stuff out, like right. trying not to get too far ahead, but yeah. Yeah, having enough in the tank. But so that's what we did in, in Vegas. Hmm. Um, and then with this, this will be like our spring tour stuff. So right, your guys yeah, will yeah. drop probably in two weeks. With uh, okay. Norvell being the bussin episode, and then yeah. the players being like stacked days before and after to oh, make it like cool. a Florida State themed week. That's dope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool though, man. We 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 have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Where else are you guys gonna hit? So I'm asking Matt questions. Well, uh, he's good. Bama, Nebraska, and Oregon. Oh, that's sick. Always gotta get back to Nebraska. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Like, what made you not go to Nebraska for six years? I don't know. I don't think the boys hit me up. Nah. Yeah, ah, Nebraska come boys. Come on, left Coach. Me Rule. Out. What are we come doing? On, Big Red. Hey, come on, Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely coming back here though. I, I'm I'm gonna come back though for a game. That's yeah, a we have to, man. Especially yeah. once they get all that. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that, but the yeah, whole like, stadium renovation. I like the old school coffee. Yeah, like pack everybody in. Like, but, yeah, how you feel about the renovations? Because there's been some like mix. Everybody's kind of like, oh, it's gonna be weird. I don't. I don't. I feel like it's getting like that. You know, cheese and cracker, cheese and wine style yeah. of college football. Field you know? sweets. You and feel shit. me? Like field sweets. Like kind of like the NFL. Like, I, I like you know, like I said, like the old school. Like pack the house, eighty five thousand. You know. I don't really like screaming. It. Yeah, fans. this is yeah. what college football's turning into. People are yeah. tired of you know sitting on metal bleachers and yeah. pissing in troughs. They want to get that. You know, they figure I pay the money for it. They want to yeah. be luxury. Yeah, so I get it. Without asking who you want to be drafted by, how okay. about who were your favorite teams growing up? I grew up a big Colts fan. Andy, that was Colts fan. Yeah, I'm Andy, from Indiana, so Andy. I mean, I grew up with like Peyton Manning and the boys were you know dominating. So that yeah. was like, that was a big squad growing up. Losing to Tom Brady. Hell, I uh, fuck out of here. Come on, relax, relax. <laughs> so, so you you like the Colts? Yeah. yeah. What what what, uh, what pick the Colts got this year? Uh, hey, 15. 15? Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, fi oh, you know. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> like, oh, well, I'm looking at the bonuses. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> 
I mean, don't I ain't gonna lie, Indianapolis is a great team to go to. Played against them a lot. Love playing in that stadium. So I mean, yeah. and that's hometown. But you know, a lot of people don't like to go back to the hometown because nah, trust me. Uh, if I if I had a choice, I'd stay down south. That weather is different. Bro. Yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> you say you love it? Oh yeah. Cause you know, they be like family, you be like 30 tickets every game. Oh man. And they don't give you they don't copy it. No, right? then, only no, two. You get two. You get two fucking two. So you just gotta work with, you know, your teammates, see if they're not like using oh, them. Or something. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, so man. you gotta go around like use your tickets, use your tickets. Yeah. If not, you gotta buy all those tickets. Oh, you, oh man. That's no, crazy. they make you buy them. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> how many how many did you have to buy at one point? When I was in San Francisco. <sighs> 42 was the most. 42 tick- fucking tickets. 42 yeah, tickets. Ain't no way, man. 42. That's, and then for the playoff game, game no, I had to cut off. Playoff, I had 100 people. I'm there. Oh, 10. They only gave me 10. I was like, they only gave me 10. They were like, We're bro, I can't get no more. Because them tickets was like 500. <laughs> the lady's face. <laughs> like five more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got anything else for Braden? Nah, man. Uh, sh- sh- thanks for coming out, talking to us, man. Yeah, no, and, uh, we no, gonna appreciate wish- y'all having me, man. Yeah, we're going to wish you yeah, the best, bro, man, for you, bro. in the, in the yeah, draft. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Definitely. You got anything for us? Anything else for us? No, nah, man. I kept y'all long enough, man. That's dope. It's real dope. No, this was awesome, man. Thank you very thank much, Braden. We're going to have a picture, too. Yeah, for sure. Hey, hang on. Who's the smelliest dude in the locker room? Smelliest yeah. dude in the locker room. Smelliest Fuck. dude in the locker room. Uh, shit, when I was there... Or if you had to give a nice Duke Cannon package with deodorant, nice, uh, soaps, lotions, hey, hook, hook my clone. dog Jared Verse up with some Duke Cannon. Smelly ass. Who's dude. this? It's Jared Verse. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>